Hi guys, Mr. G here, and thanks for tuning in. We are continuing with our discussion on functions, okay? So for this week, we're looking at the quadratic function. Um, just a quick question, can you tell the difference between a linear and a quadratic function? So I want you to think about it this way. Remember the algebraic expressions which you did, you started by having an expression like this, okay, think of a number, any number x, and add one to it. This is an algebraic expression, but we learned that if we introduce a nice notation and say, well, a sort of represent a machine, remember that machine process. So if we have a machine, then we refer to this thing as a function, okay? And we just realized that actually a function is nice, it's just a nice word for an algebraic expression with degree one, okay? So in this case, in particular, a linear function, we said this is linear, this is linear, because when we draw this, we saw that the picture is actually a straight line, okay? Straight means linear, okay? Now, I'm sure you can try of get a kind of now guess and think of what we will expect with the quadratic, looking at this here, yes, it means um, we have an expression actually with degree two. Guys, algebraic expressions were a very important foundation for you guys in grade seven, eight, and nine, okay? So what we will be doing with functions actually, we are expanding our knowledge of algebraic expressions. We are going to do everything that you are doing in algebraic expressions from factorization to simplifying, grouping like terms, things like that, making one variable subject of the formula in terms of equations, and uh, we'll just have more fun, that's about it. We're gonna draw pictures basically of these different expressions that you learned about, okay? So let's get to it. We're talking about the quadratic function. The quadratic function, guys, is known as a parabola. That's another common name for this thing. It is called a parabola. And this is the general form, in general. In general, it has this form, ax squared plus q equals to zero. And most importantly, the condition here is that a is not zero. a is different from zero. Another common form that is quite known for this is the form, um, as you will think with the linear one. So I can say a1 x squared plus b1 x plus c1, right, um, <coughs> is equal to, maybe if you like, you may say equals to zero, okay? So that's another common form that you may want to use and try out. Um, well, maybe it may appear in an exam or so, depending on which notation the examiner is actually using, right? So I hope you have actually gone through the discovery exercise, guys. Um, if not, please be honest with yourself. Pause this video right now and go complete that exercise. It is not really for my benefit, but for your personal benefit, okay? And so I'm not gonna go through this because I really want you to try that out, all right? So, hoping that you have completed this table here, okay? I wouldn't want you to complete it with me because that would waste our time, but hoping that you have completed it on your own. I need you to answer the following questions. Okay, you're gonna look at your table now and uh, which you have written, completed in your book and think about the domain and the range of each function. Remember we discussed this when we were discussing the linear function and uh, we discussed domain and range intensively. Think also, ask yourself if there is a minimum or a maximum value, okay. Huh. I wrote this twice, there shouldn't be there. And also think about this, for which values, okay, of x actually, uh, because we are using x is, uh, no, no, not x, my bad. Yes, a, we want a because the function, it has the form fx equals to ax squared plus q. So for which values of a 
is the graph becoming narrow and wider? In other words, are these values where a is greater than one or values where a is less than one? Okay, less than one, maybe we may want to say, but not zero between one and zero there. Okay, so think about that. So in other words, here a is a fraction, okay? Or you may say rational. So think about that. Go back to that table and look at the value of A and ask yourself that question. The next thing that I would like us to look at is to check by just now looking at these. So at this point, having completed that activity, you should be in a position to actually look at a function like f of x here and tell if it will have a maximum or a minimum value. And in this case, I can tell you, we are going to have a minimum value. Okay, of course, Mr. G has done this countless times. Um, you, as someone who's been introduced to this, you may want to check what do I mean by a minimum value, all right? And of course, G of X here again, can you tell? By the way, what is the difference here between g of x and h of x, what is the difference? What is the main difference rather? What is the difference in terms of a or with respect to a, the variable a? Ask yourself that, think about it. I hope you have come to the conclusion that, well, here a is negative, there a is positive. That is the key difference between these two. Here, a is positive, to say something is positive in mathematics, we say it's greater than zero um, because on the number line, numbers which are on the right hand side of zero are actually bigger than zero, okay? And to say something is negative, we say it is less than zero because of when you look at the number line, that you did in grade one, by the way, or so, the numbers that are on the left side of zero are actually smaller than zero, okay? So that's what we mean and we know those numbers that are on the left side of zero are actually negative numbers so hence we use this notation in mathematics a critical question that i'm going to ask you is this one what do you notice about the range of each function this function here what will be the range this function here what will be the range this function here what will be the range and that function there what will be the range. This is just to get you thinking about the parabola or the quadratic function. In the upcoming videos, we're going to roll out the story and see nicely how A affects the graph, how Q also affects the graph. And at the end of this lesson, you will be able to sketch a parabola and solve some problems that involve the parabola. Thanks for tuning in, cheers.